Hey, everybody, I'm Ellen, and welcome to this edition of the Crazy For You podcast. I'm so excited you're here. It's going to be a wonderful evening tonight. I am just thrilled to have the Noro Trunk Show with me. So um, all of the garments from the most recent issue, issue 17, um, I just received them all, and they are absolutely beautiful. It's the middle of November, and normally in the shop, um, October is Noro month. So it's a little bit late, but you know, Noro is a little bit like um, like a boyfriend that I had in college. Um, he was always, always late. I mean, hours late, and it would tick me off so much. Um, but when he got there, you know, he showed up and he had champagne and damn, he was just, so, <laughs> it was just so nice to look at. Um, you know, you'd forgive him anything. And I think Noro is a little bit like that, especially this season. So it's a, it's a beautiful collection in this issue and the yarns are just gorgeous. So um, I know that some of you have already seen some of the yarns when I did the, um, the kind of the yarn review of the three new yarns. So I will be featuring those in particular because well, they're new um, and they are kind of featured in the magazine. But I did want to start off with um, this cover design. So what I thought is I would just go through all of the garments that are in the magazine that I mean, obviously not all of them, they're all here, but some of them are, you know, really my favorite and we only have so much time tonight. But I did want to want to start with the cover design. So I've set the camera up and I'm going to move this chair out of the way so that I can back up and you can see me. And I hope you can hear me. So here's the microphone, but look at this, this garment. So this is uh, the mitered jacket from the cover of Noro issue 17. I'm just gonna let you have a look at this a while. <laughs> it is beautiful. It's comfortable. Let me show you the back. Isn't that nice? I love this. I love this so much. Um, so actually the one from the trunk show is on the mannequin back there. And I am thrilled to say that this is our shop sample. So I get to keep it forever and ever and ever. <laughs> Yay. And if you're local and you want to come by and see it, I would encourage you to do it because it's not only beautiful, it's comfortable, it's cozy, and it's fun to knit. So it starts, it has this beautiful I-cord edge. Can you see this I-cord edge? So it starts with an I-cord edge and then you're picking up these miters along that I-cord edge. So it's kind of worked in one piece except for the sleeve and it's self-finished. So it's just a really, I think it's a cleverly constructed garment. Like I said, that's, that's beautiful to look at, comfortable to wear and fun to knit and the colors are to die for. So um, that this garment is worked in color 21 of Ito. And Ito, as you know, was new last season. And it was just, was it last season? Yeah, I think last, last fall it was new. Maybe not, maybe this is its third season. Anyway, if it's its third season, it's not getting any, it's not slowing down at all. It continues to be just a beautiful, beautiful fiber. It's 100% wool. It's very like Curion, except rather than being put up in 50 gram skeins, it's put up in 200 gram skeins. So if you're a Noro addict, as I am, you know that sometimes with Curion, it can take you two or more skeins to get through the entire colorway. So, uh, Ito's sort of claim to fame is that there are 36 colors in each um, giant skein. So it's it's a lot of fun. It just, um, all the colors, they're just so pretty. You can't see them so well, but I do have these all on the website. And I'm really excited to be doing Vogue Knitting Live this weekend. So if you are interested in more up close and personal and a kind of a private look that um, 
that's going to be Vogue Knitting Live. I'm doing Saturday at 10 o'clock and I'm featuring Okunashima. And um, then I have several sessions on um, Sunday. So from 11 to 2, I have a, a Zoom room and we'll be going through Miyabi and Suido and Ito. And um, so that's a little more interactive, but I think it's it's going to be fun. So but we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. I see that a lot of people have joined us. So let me just have a quick look and say hey to everyone. All right. Hey, Amelia, nice to see you. Gwen and Terry, oh, it's a pleasure. Um, B, Tara, ooh, Tara, you are gonna love something I got to show you tonight. Um, hey, Melissa, oh my goodness, so nice to see you guys. Hey, Jal, wonderful. Okay, so if you have any questions or if you want more information about anything, send me an email. Um, you know, my email is ellen at crazyforyou.com. And I wanted you to know also that a lot of the garments that I'm showing you tonight, I have already kitted up and put on the website. So that would be in particular for um, Okunashima and for Miyabi. So uh, let's get started. I guess we already are started. Hey, Sarah. Hi, Hannah. So glad you could join us. So if you haven't um, been in the shop lately, I have put together this space for Noro. It's like a whole little three-sided Noro booth. In fact, you know what? I'm going to turn the camera around so that you can see. Hang on. All right. So you can see over there. I have all of the Silk Garden and Curion, and there I have all of the beautiful Bachi and Kanzashi and Akari and the samples, and then I have Ito, and oh, there's the Miyabi, and I even have more. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I have more Okunashima over there and Suido over there. So there is a great deal of Noro in the shop, but I love having it like this. It's a sort of little cozy Noro room. I think you would love to be here. So if you can, um, definitely come in. Okay. So how are we doing? Hi, Amy. Hi, Evelyn. Nice to see you. So I'm super excited. All right. So this is lovely. Like I said, this is just beautiful. And if you were here doing a Noro event with me, you know that I would have everybody up and we'd be trying on the garments and we'd be walking around and maybe having a little fashion show with uh, Jilda or something. But uh, since you're not, I'm going to have to put them on, but that's okay. So it'll be fun. The next one I wanted to show you from the magazine is... Does anybody have a copy of this magazine already? If you don't, we have plenty of them and you can order them on the website and um, I'll send it right out to you or we have them in the shop and you can pick one up. So the next one is this really pretty uh, tweed jacket. You remember when we talked before about this yarn, Suido. So this is 100% wool. It is, um, I consider it to be a bulky. I swatched it and you can look at that um, video. It, it was a live stream that I did about a month or so ago where I talked in particular about these three new yarns. So Suido is, um, it's kind of written written on the label as like a, um, a heavy Aaron or, you know, I think it's best on a US 10 at a gauge of about three stitches to the inch. So that's what I swatched it on. But the point I want to make is that when you're knitting it, it has a very different feel than it does after it's been knit and after it's been washed. So this little swatch here is just lovely and I have washed it. Um, the jacket I wanna show you has not been washed, but it still feels really nice. Uh, I'm not gonna take the time to unbutton this. I'm just gonna pull it on over my head. So excuse me while I dress. <laughs> okay, so going to back up so you can see this is a long line cardigan can you see maybe i have to step up on this chair again yeah okay so do you see how this 
cardigan fits. It's got pockets. It hits me right around mid fanny. Um, and it has a wonderful um, shawl collar that I'm quite sure has worked with short rows. Um, long sleeve, gener nice, generous ribbing at the hem, which I showed you earlier. This is a really wonderful garment. And I wanted to tell you about it. It takes, um, it goes from a, a finished bust of 34 to 54, and it takes between four and six skeins of Suido. So I think this is a really nice wearable button up cardigan. So very nice. What is next? Oh yeah, okay. So anybody like this? Oh, and I wanna show you the colors that this comes in. So Suido has lovely colors. The jacket is worked in this kind of green you see that? And there's also this beautiful pink, um, the blue that I showed you in the swatch. And then there are, there's this lovely red. See the red? Look at these lights. And then three, oh, and a purple. Oh, my goodness, how could I forget the purple? Beautiful, rich purple. And then three lovely kind of neutrals. Let me hold these up for you. So there's kind of a, a gray here at the top and then a gray and brown and then kind of a brown with a gold and a green. Really, really pretty. I think I'm gonna move this light over so you can see a little bit. that show the colors a little better? Yeah. Okay. Excuse me while I squint at the computer screen. All right. So this is Suido. Has anybody been in the shop and seen the Suido in person? Let me know in the comments. Yeah, the pink is really pretty and the purple is beautiful. So my setup here at the shop is a little bit, um, I call it uh, a podcasting light. I have the same camera and I have the same lights, but I don't have, um, I don't have the same computer setup. So it's hard for me to share the screen and to put your comments up. So I apologize for that. But there's something nice about, I think, being in the shop. What do you guys think? Okay, so I wanted to show you, if you're following along in your magazine, I wanted to show you this vest. I'm not usually a really big vest person, but, um, this is a beautiful one. <laughs> I was surprised. And I think this is why you kind of always have to put something on to really know. You can hear me okay, right? Because I'm far away from my microphone. Anyway, just the feel of this. So this is this is Miyabi. And we talked about this, as I said, um, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. It's a cashmere blend. I mean, Noro really has outdone themselves on the Luke's factor with this yarn. It is so soft and it has this wonderful halo to it. And I know if this had been, um, if this were washed or each time that, that it becomes washed, I don't know if they, they how often they wash the, sh the samples that come out in the trunk show. But if this were my garment, I would wash it in a, um, a very gentle no rinse product like soak or eucalyn and the fibers would just really open up and be beautiful you know even without that the fibers just by being knit and handled have really bloomed and they are just lovely so this is just a really really classic vest somebody is blowing my phone up Anyway, very classic vest. 
um, Amy was in last night. We had our little um, Tuesday night custom fit class and she put it on with a dress and it looked so cute. So this is this little vest and they show it in the magazine with a blouse and I think it looks great with a crisp white blouse, but I think it looks also nice just, you know, with, um, with a, a turtleneck. I think you could wear it with a t-shirt and kind of extend the season that way. And I think that would also be just wonderful. So this is shown in color 12 and the colors of Miyabi are beautiful. I remember when we talked a couple months ago, the, the one skein that I had, had a lot of brown in it and it looked maybe a little um, not that appetizing, but they these are just gorgeous. So I'm gonna try and show you. Let me see if I can get this light to show a little better. Okay. All right. That last in my face. So the colors of the Miyabi, I have them right over here. This is the color that is shown. Can you see? Hmm. I gotta figure this out. But but this is a a blue and brown and purple and gray. And you know, you can you can't see it so much in the skein, but seeing it knitted up, it's just wonderful. That's color 12. And then there's this lovely, my favorite, of course, this pink, which has pink and purple and, again, a little bit of taupe and some gray in it. Oh, it's just wonderful. It's just a dream. And there's actually two different, so these are two different uh, colorways these two neutrals. So this one has a little more yellow and this one has a little more purple. Four and color nine. So very, very pretty. And oh, there's this green. Come on, camera. Camera's not doing its autofocus thing. There we go. Now, Tara, I promised that I had something special for you, and I do. In Miyabi, I have the very garment from the trunk show, from the magazine, in that brioche. This one, it's so gorgeous. Are you with me, Tara? <laughs> this is made with five skeins of Miyabi in a brioche. It is so cozy and wonderful. Just really, really lovely. And again, this is one of those where um, attractiveness and fun to knit and wearability all intersect. So this is a great garment to, um, to wear. It, it can be worn like as a shawl like this with the collar turned back, just almost as a, like a sweater. See how this? And it also could be worn just sort of as a, as a shawl like this. Wonderful and cozy. And yesterday I had it over my lap <laughs> just to keep me warm because there was a chill in the shop here. So, um, this is really lovely. And this is worked in color 18. Isn't that pretty? What do you think? So I'm excited because that's the, that's the garment from the trunk show. But I also have one as a shop sample for our very own Four Keeps. So can you see, can you see the stitch work on that, that brioche? It's so beautiful. Can you see how large it is? So this is, this is probably four, 
four and a half feet tall, long, and a good yard wide. So a really ch nice, generous wrap. And I do have these kitted up on the website. Um, and if you are looking for a link to those, I can send it to you. But if you just type in the search bar, um, Miyabi, M-I-Y-A-B-I, it'll come up for you. Okie doke. Let me go over here real quick and see. Okay, I wasn't having an emergency on the phone. I was I was wondering if maybe somebody had, was trying to text me, Ellen, you know, uh, you have something green in your teeth, or Ellen, we can't hear you, or whatever. It was just my sweet daughter. Okay, what's next? I'm getting a little off track but with the magazine, but that's okay, right? Because you didn't know what order I was gonna go in anyway, did you? Oh, all right, so sweaters. Uh, Moving on to um, Okunashima, which is the third brand new yarn that Noro has for this season. Okunashima is, I don't know how long you guys have been knitting with, um, with Noro, but how many of you remember a yarn called Kosharon? Kosharon was a heavy worsted um, yarn with a, an obscene amount of um, Angora in it. And it was just lovely so so beautiful and that that angora again like the cashmere when you wash it and knit with it it just really really blooms and it makes this beautiful soft really luxurious kind of fabric so okunashima is is like that in that it has this angora in it and it really is beautiful i think i showed you when we did the tasting um do i have that little splash yeah so I have this little swatch of it, and this is one that I, I knit and then washed. You see? But you can really see how the, um, how the yarn and the fabric gets this beautiful kind of halo to it, even more so than the cashmere. It's a different feel than the cashmere. The cashmere has, you know, a real kind of matte softness. Um, but it doesn't have like the, the floofy quality. And if you're worried about this getting in your nose or making you sneeze, it's not like that. It's not sheddy, it's not icky. It's, it's just beautiful. So that's the little swatch of it. This is one of the sweaters knitted in it. This is by Kanita Tully, who is a wonderful designer and a wonderful person. Um, and this is an A-line sweater. And this, for me, this just punches all the, all the um, boxes. It's um, the idea, you know, that Noro is stripey is wonderful. But I love it when designers stripe the striping yarn. I love that. So what she's done here is to use a single color of Okunashima, but starting them in two different places. So, um, you know, two rows of one and two rows of the next and two rows of the next and two rows of the next. So you get this, you get the stripes, but it's kind of not so, it doesn't feel so stripey. I, I don't know how to describe it. I think it's just magical when you, when you, um, when you stripe a self-striping yarn like Noro, especially Noro, because, because there is no self-striping yarn like Noro. That's it. I mean, it's the only one that, that can do Noro. Lots of people have tried to imitate Noro. Only Noro can do Noro. And no, I'm not biased. <laughs> Why do you ask? So um, like I said, this is from Kanita Tully. Um, it's a pullover. It's an A-line shape, you know, really nice, easy fit. I love that it has set in sleeves. Um, I love this kind of modern high-low hem. The back of it is shaped with uh, short rows. So you have the, it's a little bit longer in the back and it's curved in the back. It's just really flattering. And this particular colorway with the pink and the green, I think is spectacular. Anybody like this one? I wish you could feel it. 
if you're local, you can come in and feel it. Let's see what's going on on the chatter. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> hey, Peggy, nice to see you. Um, yes, Tara, I can send it to you. You order it online, okay? Order it online and I will ship it out to you. Not the finished garment, right? The kit. Um, <laughs> or you can pick it up in the shop. Anything that you order tonight, by the way, ships free. So that's very cool. Hey, Anne. Yes. So um, Karen is asking whether the wrap knits up fast. You know, it's it's on a larger needle and it's brioche. So I think, yeah, it probably does knit up fast unless you make mistakes and have to go back because going back in brioche is not that much fun. But if you know how to work it, it is going to knit up nice and fast and it's going to be so incredibly wonderful. You'll be so happy you have it. So I love this. Anybody else with me on this? It's just, like I said, it really speaks to me. Um, so let me show you also the colors of Okunashima because I think they're beautiful. And what better way to show you than in actually knitted garments? So that was color... Color four. And lots of beautiful colors here. But rather than just show you the show you the yarn, and I will show you the yarn, but I want to show you these other garments that are knitted up in the Okunashima, because I think you'll really like them. So another project from the magazine that is just beautiful is this cabled wrap. And Karen, I think you might, if, you're, if you haven't done brioche before, you might like this wrap better than the, um, than the brioche one. And you could do this in the Miyabi or in the Okunashima. It would be fine either way. And it, you know, it's not a garment, it doesn't have to fit a certain way. So if you would like me to kit up some, something for the um, that Miyabi wrap in the Okunashima or vice versa, if you'd like me to kit up this wrap in the Miyabi, I would be happy to do that. You know where to find me. So this is color, color blue. Color three, and this is a lovely kind of watery blue-green color. So there are, so you've got this turquoise. This just makes me think of the ocean and, and mermaids. This is your color, Melissa. So um, turquoise and blue indigo, and then this kind of celadon. So it, it just goes so gently and gradually from one color to the next. Um, it, it definitely is a Noro. It definitely is striping, but it's one of their more subtle um, striping palettes. And I think you'll find that in Okuma, Okunashima generally, that the colors are a, a little more gentle. Not all of them, but um, it's just has, it's a soft yarn and it has a slightly softer palette to go with it. So let me see what's going on in the chat. Yeah, this cabled wrap in three is, in color three is beautiful. And I do have this kitted up on the website. You can absolutely order this tonight and have this shipped out tomorrow. So that is color three. And this is the this is the one actually from the magazine and from from the trunk show. But again, I love Noro so much. This is our shop sample in the Okunashima. So, and this is in a different colorway. This is in color color. Oh, asking the hard question again. Color six. Yeah. So this is really pretty. So all that stuff I was saying about the, the subtle colors, 
again, you have this um, kind of overall pink effect, but it goes from hot pink to kind of this purpley pink, and then um, this sort of orangey pink, and then it's punched up with this, um, it's not really a lime green. This is, um, this is more like just a, a yellowy green. I don't want to say fluorescent because it's not fluorescent at all, um, but it, it does give you, and I think this is what Noro does so well, it gives you some relief from the, um, from the overall color. I think our eyes tend to maybe get tired or I know that there's, um, there's a lot of studies that are, are done on this and there's probably a word for it, but I'm not an artist, so I don't know. But, um, but the way that our eyes perceive colors, sometimes when you have this up one color that is a little bit jarring, it, it's the spice, you know, and it makes all the other things work a little it enhances all of the other colors it's like um it's just like a squeeze of lime on something that's otherwise really really heavy with olive oil or you know um, a bit of sea salt on your chocolate caramel do you know what i'm saying just a, a little something that's gonna gonna punch it up so anyway this is beautiful i love this so much can you tell that I'm just a little bit crazy for Angora? I do like it. Okay. Does anybody have the magazine at home and have a particular garment that they want to see? So if you do, let me know in the chat so that I don't miss your favorite garment as I, you know, just gush on about the others. Let me see what's up. What's up. All right. Hey, Shelly. Hey, Karen. All right. Okay. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, okay. Let me know if there's something you want to see. What else did I want to show you? I already went on and on about the mitered wrap. And in the magazine, they give you a really nice kind of detailed pictorial uh, guidance on making those miters which I think is nice because it might be a new technique for you. Okay, I wanted to show you this one. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this one when it came. Um, again, that's why you try it on, you know? This is, this is one of those that you look at and you think, yeah, I, I just don't like that. But <laughs> next thing you know, you're marrying it, right? Um, this is Kanzashi, which when you look at it, you think, oh, that's going to be stiff. It's going to be hard. It's going to be scratchy. I'm not going to like it. But it's actually really, really soft and very nice. And it has a beautiful texture. It's kind of... Uh, it's a boucle on, on high alert. So I'm just gonna slip this on real quick so that you can see. Um, and I don't typically like raglan lines, um, but for some reason, I love this. Ginny and I both were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe how cute that is. All right, let me see if I got it on. Am I dressed? Okay. So this is just really cute, I think. You can't really tell. I'm going to have to stand on a chair. I need a chair that's shorter than this, but taller than my, myself. Okay. So can you see how this, how this looks? I think, it's really, I think it's really fun, and the colors are really great, and the texture is really nice. And, you know, Boucle is definitely having a moment this season. I think a lot of the, the yarns and the designs that we're seeing are taking advantage of texture. And we haven't seen a lot of texture for a number of seasons. So I think it's really refreshing to see the, you know, the teddy bear yarns and the, the boucle. I think it's just really part of the whole kind of cozy feel. Um, not, the, not the Danish or Swedish uh, huga, but 
but different, you know, you know what I mean? We'll call it pandemic cozy. So I like this. I'll take it off. Okie doke. So I think I already talked about that. Oh, okay. Um, so last in this, this spring, so not the current season, but this summer season, Noro brought out um, a yarn that I absolutely fell in love with. And a lot of you um, didn't get a chance to see it because <clears throat> it arrived <clears throat> just before we were, you know, shut down. But I did send it out in a number of quarantine kits and we've had a really good response to it. And that yarn is called Subami. T-S-U-B-A-M-E, and it is a beautiful, um, I want to say worsted, light worsted weight yarn that is a wool and silk blend. And you know what silk does to a fiber. It just, it, it really makes it luminous. Where, um, where cashmere and angora make fibers kind of matte and soft and and poofy. Silk makes it smooth and intense and reflective. So it's a very different look. I, I hate to use the word shiny, but it does give it a certain brilliance, a certain reflectivity because of the way the silk fibers um, are, are made at the molecular level and the way that they take the dye. So let me grab this, this this garment, because we have it here and I want to show it to you. So pretty. You can see it hanging from behind. All right. So this is the garment. So it's a long cardigan and Ginny was in when we were unpacking the, um, the trunk show and she put this on. This is a very Ginny, a very Ginny garment. But don't you just love this colorway, this purple and blue? Subami really is, um, even though it was introduced for the spring season, I consider it to be an all season yarn. You can... Um, knit something. I knit a dress in Subami and I'll be wearing that on probably on Sunday. Um, but you can, you can knit something in Subami and wear it all year long. So it has the, the wonderful characteristics of, um, you know, being very breathable and the silk keeps it from being so wooly. The hand on it is very smooth and, um, Again, the colors, can you see how the colors, it's just a lot of really beautiful sheen on this. So I think it's just stunning. I have to get on the chair again because I do it, hang on. I hope I don't kill myself. So can you see now this falls um, below Fanny, you know, mid thigh for me. Um, and it has a pretty decent size range. It takes, so Subami has a, you know, a huge amount of yardage. So um, the first three sizes take just three skeins and the, um, the 2X and the 3X take just four skeins. So super generous um, yardage on the Subami. How are we doing on time? Oh my goodness, we are way over. Oh, well, um, I still wanna show you a lot of stuff. <laughs> Apologize for going over. So showed you the wrap. There are a ton of really cute hats and hats are a great way for you to play with the yarn. So let me just grab these real quick and show you. Oh, I apologize for going over. So this is probably my favorite hat of the collection. This is in Okunashima. It has a great cable pattern and look how perfectly this little pom-pom goes with it. 
So we have these palms, um, they're vegan palms in an absolutely amazing array of colors. And I'm gonna be kidding these up. Takes just one skein of Okunashima and just one pom pom. So I'll be putting these together so that you can get them as a kit. These knit up so fast, they make great gifts. It's a one skein project, which I absolutely love. This is in, I didn't want to talk about that one. <laughs> this is in Okunashima, which is just lovely. This takes two skeins because they've put this little pom-pom on it. I suspect that possibly without the pom-pom, you might be able to get it um, in just one skein. I might, I might make the rim just a smidge smaller anyway, just so that you could get it in one skein. And I think it maybe needs to be a little smaller. This, even my little pea head feels, feels a little big. So you could definitely do um, fewer stitches and then increase where you needed to. So I think you could probably get away with just one skein on this. Oh, okay. So a couple other things to show you. My favorite. This sweater in Okunashima. This is knit side to side. And this is worked in color two, which is that kind of gray with a rose and a little bit of periwinkle in it. This is a really fun to knit, easy to wear garment. Um, I think you'll really, really love this. The, um, I think it takes like four or five skeins, so um, not too many. And I do have this worked up in the, um, as a kit on the website and you can purchase this if you would like and i show all the colors so this is really beautiful amy had this <laughs> we were having some fun last night at our class and i made everybody try stuff on so amy tried this on and she really loved it this um this lace motif comes just kind of at the bust and then at the hem so it's really cute and look how how that angle of the stitch work kind of makes the Noro stripe zig a little bit. I think that's so fun. This is really cute. I'm not gonna put it on because I'm hot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but it looks great on the mannequin. Look, let me show you. It's definitely oversized. So um, I think the smallest size has a bust of like 39. So um, you'll want to take that into consideration when you're looking at sizing and deciding what size to make on that garment. Remember that it is intended to have a really substantial, you know, six to eight inches of ease um, when you make it so that it's going to hang kind of loose and straight. That's the idea for that one. Um, another one in Okunashima. I think this is lovely. This is a simple, simple cowl. It's worked in the round. It's a, a double, you know, intended to be doubled. Of course, you could wear it long, but it would be pretty long. But it's a simple, um, simple lace pattern. And Noro in lace, as you know, is so pretty. It's like I was saying about how that lace um, made the stripes zigzag. You see how the lace and the tension of the, um, the knit two togethers and the yarn overs kind of give an undulation. Stop. Sorry, sweetie. Uh, give an undulation to the, um, to the yarn. So this is really pretty. This takes two skeins, and this also is worked up as a kit available on the website. And any of the things, just type in the name O-K-U-N-O-S-H-I-M-A, Okunashima, and that's going to bring up everything that is Okunashima. So just a little tip, when you are putting on a long cowl like this, rather than starting here and wrapping it this way, I like to start here and put the twist in the back. 
I think that makes it um, a little better looking. And then just don't worry too much about it. So I think we, we so often fret about what side of our cowl is showing and we want it to be just perfect. You know, French women never do that. They just put it on and what the heck. And I think, I think I'm going to try that. Just put it on and what the heck, right? But anyway, this is lovely, feels beautiful. This would make a really, really nice gift. And speaking of gifts, I know we are really, really over. I wanted to show you this little scarf bandana thing that I had. Hang on, I think I left it over there. <gasps> okay, there is a bandana cowl that is really cute. And if I can find it, I'll be so very happy. Hmm. All right. I'm just going to show you in the magazine. because I can't lay my hands on it right now. I, and I just had it. But it's, it's very cute. And the point that I wanted to make about it is that it, you, here it is. You see that little cow? So it's super cute and it's worked in Ito. And Ito, as I said, is this big, beautiful, generous tank of 200 grams. And I, I weighed the little um, bandana cowl, and it was 69 grams. So you could make at least two, if not three, little bandana cowls from just one skein of Ito. So that would be such a fun thing. I mean, it would be so Luke's for somebody to receive as a gift. You could make one to give and one to keep for yourself, which is always nice. You know, you've worked on a thing and you just fall in love with it and then you have to give it up. But um, yeah, so I think that would be a really, really nice gift. I'm just so frustrated that I can't find it right now. Mm. Oh, there it is. So um, one of the other things that they've kind of featured and that I'm going to be featuring on Sunday at Vogue Knitting Live is the idea of these um, Noro for the home. So we have had, and in the past, and I have for Sunday, um, a lot of the blankets from the blanket book. And if you don't have a copy of the blanket book, you really want to get that because it's just lovely. And it has so many projects in there that you can mix and match. There is a, um, a little throw in the issue 17 made with Bachi and Kanzashi. And this pillow is also one of them that's from that issue. And this is made with two colors of Korean. Um, surprising colors, you know, you wouldn't have thought, you know, that these would be the colors that would, would go together. You know, there are these two colors in this in this pillow, but it's just so much, so much fun. And can, wouldn't you have fun kind of picking out colors to go in your room? Like if you have a, a neutrally kind of family room, it would just be so fun to kind of punch it up with a Noro pillow. We're spending a lot more time at home these days, so we need to have it as, as nice and cozy as we can, right? So, I can tell from my phone that uh, you have already placed some orders, so I'm super excited about that. Thank you. Okay, all right. So, Gwen wanted me to try something on. Which is it? Let's see. Okay, um, Amelia talking about the sweater with the vertical stripes. Is this the one? And did you did you hear me talk about this at all? 
but this is the one made in Okunashima and the stripes are vertical because the garment is knit side to side. And the construction is really simple. It's actually all this, the sleeves and the body are all in one piece, knit like from cuff to cuff. This would be really cute on you, Amelia. So this is, is really, really a nice one. Uh, yes, I do need a footstool. How about that turtleneck on page two? Let's see. Oh, yeah, I do have that. I can put that, I can get that turtleneck. Hang on. So, um, Gwen asked about this turtleneck that's on page two. This is knit in tabby. We had tabby last season and it was a lot of fun. Um, I think this is a small, I think this would be cute on you, Gwen. I'm gonna try it on. I think it's gonna be too, maybe too small for me, but you can see how, how you like it. So this is, this is that turtleneck in the Yabi. And yes, I do need a little footstool. But can you see this little turtleneck? It's just very simple. I love it that it has a set-in sleeve. Um, this would be a good size for you, Gwen. If I were making it, I would probably make it the next size up because it feels just a little bit tight in the armhole for me. Or maybe I would just make the armhole a smidge deeper. But this is really cute in Tabby. Tabby is um, a DK weight, all wool yarn, and the colors were really fun. So if that's something you're interested in, please let me know. It's kind of a, um, like a curry on light, I would say. Yeah, the, and the colors of Tabby were very intense. As you can see, it has this um, electric blue and electric lime and black. Very, very pretty. Let's see there's anything else that I have missed. I apologize for being so scattered tonight. Let's see. So yeah, these are, these are really fun. These are really fun garments. And I have these until, um, till like Thanksgiving that, that weekend. So Black Friday. So if you are local, I would absolutely encourage you to come by the shop. Um, I, have, I have all the yarn in stock. I have it on the website and I'm working to put, um, put kits together for some of the more popular things. But we have so many. It's so hard to know like what to share with you because they're just all so wonderful. But I'm going to be continuing to put the kits together, and I think they are just really, really fun. I think you'll love them. Um, lots of new colors of Silk Garden, new colors of Curion. Um, I did also want to real quick mention this sweater, which is just beautiful. This is knit in one of the new colors of Silk Garden. I love the construction. It has um, kind of a mock turtle. It has a set in sleeve, but it, it has, um, it has a center panel and then separate on the side. So <laughs> sort of hard to describe. This is worked in stockinette. Um, and this is worked in stockinette and this is worked sideways. 
so that you get all the different colors kind of going in different directions. And it's got the cute, really cute high-low hem. And can you see the high-low hem? This is a as this is a very cute sweater. I love this. My only complaint, and I'm just going to be really clear about it, it makes me crazy. It comes in only one size, 39. And I don't know what universe um, designers live in where women only come in one size. Because in my universe, women comes in come in all kinds of beautiful sizes. So, you know, it's frustrating. The good news is I think if you wanted a larger or smaller size, you could adjust, um, you could adjust it, but you shouldn't have to. So that makes me a little crazy. It's still beautiful. And if you happen to be somebody who fits in a size 39, it would be a lovely garment. Um, in any event, this color of silk garden is really, really beautiful. So anybody going to Vogue Knitting Live this weekend? Anybody? going, but, you know, virtually. So the Vogue Knitting Live um, is virtual and they're all kind of, they're Zoom rooms. So I have that Zoom room again on Saturday from 10 to 11 and then on Sunday from 11 to 2. So I have a lot more time to kind of go over each, um, each colorway and each garment. And I promise I'll be more organized. This was just sort of a, you know, what it would be like if you were in the shop kind of sharing everything because um, I'm excited about it. So thank you for being patient with me on that. But if you are interested in, um, in the Vogue Knitting Live, and honestly, if you're just interested in seeing the Noro from me, send me an email and let me know, and I will work something out for you. So ellen at crazyforyou.com. Just send me, um, send me an email, and um, I will see what I can do for you. So anyway, thank you for staying with me long tonight. I hope that you got a taste for all of the wonderful new fibers that Noro has this season and the beautiful garment and pattern support that they have. I'm super excited about this particular issue. I think it's packed with really good designs, really wearable designs, um, and all of the hats and the other little things that are great for gift knitting. So I think they really nailed it with this issue 17 of Noro. So I will be back on the weekend. And then next week, I think we're going to be looking at Katya Sparkly Yarn. So until then, create something beautiful. Good night.